Hey everybody, this is Connie back with you with my Paranormal Romance Obsession. And we're continuing on with books 11 and 12 of the uh, Laurel K. Hamilton series. And this time is not an incubus. This time, incubus. Incubus? Really? Om omnibus. <laughs> omnibus is what I meant to say. This this time is not an omnibus. This time we are going into the normal books. So let's first of all let's get started with, as usual, a little bit. You know, if you haven't joined me before, we'll talk a little bit about Laurel K. Hamilton. And she is um, she was born Laurel K. Hamilton was born February nineteenth, nineteen sixty three. And she's an American fantasy and romance writer. She is best known, best known author of two series. Her first series is Anita Blank, Vampire Hunter. That is the one that we're talking about. She has 20-some books. I'm, I, To tell you the honest truth, right now I'm not real sure how many there are. There's 20-some, though. Um, anyway, Anita Blake is a professional zombie raiser, vampire executioner, and supernatural consultant for the police, which, and there's novels, short stories, and uh, graphic novels in these books. And there's been six million copies sold on the, in print. And then the second series is um, about Meredith Gentry, which is a, she's a fairy princess type thing. So um, we'll get into that one later, but not yet. So anyway, that is, and she is married and has one daughter, and there she is. Okay, so we're going to go on to the 11th book, and that is, I don't know how to pronounce this, Cer Cerulean, like the color, um, like the color, the blue color, uh, Cerulean. Cer Cerulean? 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 Anyway, you guys know what I mean. That, anyway, sins. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it's a beautiful blue color. It's this thick. This is the hardcover version. And there's Laurel on the back again. It's nice to see these in color after my printer not wanting to print in color. So I'll read about that here, and then I will read about read in the book itself. So, Cerulean Sins, I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, I can see a little bit of, there we go. Okay, is the 11th entry in the hugely popular Anita Blake series. It finds everyone's favorite vampire hunter keeping house and kicking butt. Anita Blake is trying to get her life back to normal after a breakup with her werewolf lover. She has settled into a pattern of domesticity, which means that the new man in her life, the leopard shapelifter Micah, has no problem sharing her with John Claude, master vampire of the city. Things are as peaceful as they ever get for someone who raises the dead when John Claude receives an unexpected and unwelcome visitor. visitor Musette, the very beautiful, very twisted representative of the European Council of Vampires, Anita soon finds herself caught up in a dangerous game of vampire power politics. To add to her troubles, she is asked to consult on a series of brutal killings, which seem to be the work of something unhuman. The investigation leaves her to Cerulean Sins, a vampire-run establishment that deals in erotic videos, videos that cater to very specific tastes. Anita knows one creature of the night who has such interests, Jean Claus Vit. Jean-Claude's visitor. But if Anita brings Musette down, the repercussions could cost her everything she holds dear. Once a sworn em enemy, I'm very sorry, once a sworn enemy of all monsters, Anita is now the human consort of both master vampire Jean-Claude and leopard shapeshifter Micah. When a centuries-old vampire hits St. Louis, Anita finds herself needing all the dark forces of her passion can muster to save the one she loves. Anita Blake returns to find hell hath no fury like a vampire scorned. And that is Cerulean Sins. Okay, the next book, uh, we might as well just go right in and talk about what it says in here. I'm hoping it doesn't say the exact same thing. 
Uh, praise for Anita Blake Vampire Hunter novels. Romantic thrills, erotic chills, and the sexiest vampire in the business. Uh, I've never read a writer with more fertile imagination. Hamilton just keeps getting better and better. With her New York best-selling Anita Blake Vampire Hunter novels, Anita Laurel K. Hamilton wraps readers up in stories of suspense and sensuality. Cerulean Sins is no exception. Now, Anita learns what it's like to be the new end of a centuries-old bloodline and just how far she'll let herself get pushed around. How the Mighty Have Fallen Once a sworn en enemy of all vampires, Anita is now the human consort of both Jean-Claude, the master vampire, and Micah, the leopard shapeshifter. But her love life doesn't stop there. It can't. For Anita, not quite as human as she once was, is consumed by both the lusts of the vampire and the primal hungers of the were-leopards, were desires that must be sated time and time again. But it is Jean-Claude who needs her now. His oldest ancestor has sent one of her vicious and powerful underlings to St. Louis, putting Jean-Claude and his clan on the defensive. Unsure of where she stands with this interloper, Anita finds herself tested as never before, needing all the dark forces her passion can muster to save the one she loves the most. Laurel K. Hamilton is a full-time writer who now lives in a suburb of St. Louis with her family. Her official weper, weper, <laughs> website is www.laurelkhamilton.org. And there she is, and there is Cerulean Sins. All right, so the next book in the series, number 12, is Incubus Dreams. That's where I got Incubus, because I was reading about it. Okay, that's this one. Isn't that beautiful? That's just a beautiful... See, now they've changed a little bit. They're going a lot more sexy, like with the leg there, and then the chest there. There's Laurel again. Okay, this one here is a lot thicker. All right, so let's go on to Incubus Dreams. Anita's life is more complicated than ever, and she is caught between her obligations to the living and the undead. A vampire serial killer who preys on strippers is on the loose. Called in to consult on the case, Anita fears her judgment may be clouded by a conflict of interest. For she is, after all, the consort of Jean-Claude, the ever-intoxicating master of the city, master vampire of the city, surrounded by suspicion, overwhelmed by her attempts to control the primal lusts that continue to rack her, Anita does something unprecedented. She calls for help. Anita is pushed to her limits, both professionally and passionately, when she is called on in what appears to be a case involving a vampire serial killer preying on strippers. Okay, and then let's look at the inside of this cover. Let's look at the praise for Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter novels. Sexy, edgy, wickedly ironic style, red-hot entertainment. I've never read a writer with more fertile imagination, and ha Hamilton just keeps getting better and better. Anita Blank is one of the most fascinating fictional heroines since Scarlett O'Hara, and a hell of a lot more fun than most. No one is good at stripping bare the dark desires of the hum inhuman soul as is Laurel K. Hamilton, something she has proven time and time again in her New York best-selling Anita Blank Vampire Hunter novels. Now in Incubus Dreams, Anita's life is more complicated than ever, caught as she is between her obligations to the living and to the undead. As a consultant to the Regional Prenatural Crime Investigation Unit, Anita is called in on what appears to be a case involving a serial killer, a vampire serial killer, who may be preying on strippers. She She's sure that none of the local vamps are responsible, but her judgment may be clouded as a conflict of interest, for she is, after all, the consort of Jean-Claude, the ever-intoxicating master vampire of the city, something that both her human friends and her ex, the alpha werewolf Richard, are quick to point out. 
Surrounded by suspicion, overwhelmed by her attempts to control the primal lusts that continue to rack her as a result of her passionate contacts with vampire, werewolf, and the shapeshifter Micah, Anita is pushed to her limits and beyond. So there is this book. Okay, and then I, I looked up again on, on um, Wikipedia. The Incubus Dreams, uh, what the name means. Similar to most of the books in the Anita Blake series, Incubus Dreams is titled after a fictional location within the book. In this case, Incubus Dreams is the name of a strip club where some of the later events in the book occurs. And Cerulean Sins means the meaning of the title is not apparent, but may refer to at least in part to the sheets in John Claude's bed, which Anita returns refers to several times as cerulean blue in this no novel and to the activities that occur in that bed. May also refer to Asher's eyes, which Anita describes as cerulean blue, seeing as the novel has a very Asher-oriented plot line. It was suggested by a Laurel K. Hamilton that Cerulean Sins was the name of another of Jean-Claude's businesses, a store dealing in lingerie and other adult products. However, this was deemed too racy for the books and eliminated before publishing. Okay, so here we go. Number 11, Cerulean Dreams. And number 12 is Incubus Dreams. Cerulean Sins and Incubus Dreams. Sorry about that. All right, so um, if you like this kind of thing, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in my next installment. Bye-bye.